Hi everyone, this will be quite a short review because to be frank the BF999S is so similar to the well-known BF888 that the real information is simply in the physical side of the radio. Instead of the all one colour moulded body, the BF999S has a slimmer design front to back because the battery is about half the depth of the old one. The battery has left me somewhat confused. The official Bofeng website lists it as a 1500 mAh lithium iron type. Some of the adverts on Amazon on the other hand say it's an 1800 mAh battery. And the one that's actually in the unit says it's a 6800 mAh type, which for the size is clearly impossible. I'm guessing 1500 mAh is the likely spec. The Bofeng information states a USB charger is supplied. Yet this one came with a conventional drop-in type with a wall wart style power supply. Some of the internet data I read indicates all kinds of improvements that the Bofeng website doesn't mention, such as compared to 888, the 999S speakers are upgraded from 32mm to 36mm, the sound quality is better and the volume is greater. Well, the Bofeng site indicates exactly the same power and although the tone's a bit different, I could hear nothing better. Um, the other information on the Amazon advert I saw says the 999s use 1846S motherboards. The signal transmission stability is better, signal penetration ability is better, and the motherboard is not easy to heat up. <laughs> it's complete nonsense. Stability in the specifications is identical, and I've no idea what signal penetration ability even means. They're the same output power and identical receive specs as far as I can see. Compared to the 888s, the 999s have excellent jamming capability and stability, the Amazon advert says. This sounds like they've improved the adjacent frequency rejection, which to be honest did need a bit of tweaking, but of course they haven't. I put the 888 and the 999 on the tester today, and at both ends and the centre of the frequency coverage, the specs are virtually identical. What we're left with are two pretty good radios, really. In all honesty, both are about the same weight and size, and the only real difference I can find is the pink contrast moulding on the 999. The knobs are a bit different in shape, and given the choice, I think I'd still go for the 888, as the pink mouldings look soft, but are the same hard plastic the rest of the case is made from. The antenna's slightly longer, but that really is it. If you can program your 888 and have the cable, the same one is used for the 999, and my 999 was quite happy being read and written to by my old software. They're similar price too, so the real choice is simply down to if you like pink or not. The radio has the mail connector on the antenna connection, which is quite popular now if you wish to add an external antenna. Uh, measuring the performance of both radios produces identical results. So despite the Amazon adverts claiming it's a new motherboard, nothing I can measure seems to have changed. The radios are in fact very sensitive, but the squelch circuitry prevents the squelch opening until signal levels have increased quite a bit. So if the squelch opens, the signal strength is going to be pretty good. The drop-in charger does need two hands to get the radios mated. I had difficulty engaging the radio with the slots just using one hand. Charger-wise, it comes with the normal two-pin plug now, meaning you have to use one of those death adapters, uh, which in my case didn't come with a radio. You do get a hand strap and the clip, and pretty well that's it. The radio comes with a selection of frequencies already programmed in, most of them in the UHF amateur band. So if you've got any amateurs locally and just decide to use the radio out of the box, as you probably would if you bought a few of the things, uh, no doubt they're going to notice. Um, I've been using Chirp to program it on the Bofeng 888 setting. I did download the Bofeng CPS, but so far none of my computers will work with it. Windows 10, right down to an ancient Vista computer, none will accept the prolific driver as valid, so they don't make the port available. Chirp, using the same lead, does. Um, something a bit weird going on here. I'll look into it when I get a bit more time. So, I'll see you soon. Uh, hopefully I'm going to have a Radio Oddity Repeater controller to play with shortly, so we'll have a look at that one. Bye for now.